right now, it's like an A-Rod, and man, that just, a little higher than that, about 570 on the high side, only 114 on the suction side. Temperatures, 76 supply. Kind of wonder if that's even accurate. That's a freezing cold suction pipe for 77 degree supply or temp. I just love seeing the caps missing and all dirty like that. Alright, so I need to go get some temperature probes. Getting up to be about 560 psi. Give me triple suit. I got some uh field piece probes put in the return and at the supplier fan to get the supplier temp. So I kind of thought maybe the supplier temp is reading off. It is reading high a little bit because of the way they are. Sometimes when you bring on the second stage, the first stage temperature might actually drop just a little bit more than it already is. Um, and then uh, with the low airflow and cause that pressure to go down lower, then you'll back up even more refrigerant into the condenser because they're feeding even less than the evaporator. If you don't get the high pressure trips on these issues, you get the low suction, you know, saturation, suction, whatever. It's just a conversion off of pressure to temperature. It's too low. It's like you're getting out of 100 PSI or whatever. Getting down there, that's a trip after a while. Lock this in on my supply air temperature. 75. That is reading a little high. So it's, it's, it's dropping very quick. Oh, it's gonna trip. This hit 610 and it's dropping. Dude, that thing almost tripped. And, well, it did trip. The TXC's not allowing enough refrigerant into the evaporator coil, and you'll get these nuisance trips. So, one way to make the nuisance trips go away for the high pressure is just to take a recovery jug and pull out a little refrigerant, which honestly would be something I would do on a case like this, just to get out enough that it doesn't trip keep below the trip point and keep the unit running to go ahead and take readings. Because every time it trips, you gotta restart it. Some of this airflow got that turned up a little bit. So let's go see where our E of E output is, fans. 96%. Yep, I mean, I'll look at the ability to the pressures for air. Finally got, and it still says only 0.7. That is so weird, just not moving enough air. Actually, that's because the gauge is open with the fan up. Actually, I would be actually pretty good, actually. So now I have two, the two field piece, one mounted up, one mounted down, just to kind of, you got your return air always coming here, and then a damper for outside air kind of gets the top half of that. So I'll give me some readings of what those two are, see if that's, a lot more hot air coming in than you think that's affecting the uh, split temperature there. This outdoor coil is kind of on the dirtier side compared to most of them. It's not like plug. It's just... It's where it needs to be clean though. You think it wouldn't be tripping the unit yet. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes and see what these two probes settle out on. And... B circuit trip again, when I try to reset it. Or here, you see the lower deck 77, which is reading most of the return air, which is about 72, 73. Uh, makes a little bit of hot down on that row, but most of the hot's on the top deck. You see it's like 92.9, it's actually climbing 93, 92. It's kind of going up and down, 100 and something degrees outside air, mixing, you know, coming in. So. The air entering the top half of our evaporator coil was in the 90s, and the bottom half is uh, 70s. So the uh, probe reading the leaving air is pretty high up on the blower, so I think it's reading reading the upper deck. It's not really reading down a mixed combined supply down below. Could just be why that. Uh, especially here, 73 and 75.4, you know. Move the one probe in the filter rack down down here, and the other one about right here in the supply, and what do we got? And it's still kind of dialing in, but return, or at that inlet to the coil, is about 81, still dropping. 
and 57 on the supply on the discharge side of the coil. So you see up high, whatever that was in the 90s going in and huh, 70s coming out, I think it was, and then down below, you know, it's going in much cooler because it's mostly return air temp with a little bit of outside air mixed in down to that 25% up, you know, about a quarter way up. And then the air temperature is like 56 right there. Just getting a, not doing a very good job at the top and running on one stage. So, and that probe is way up high on that blower. Might as well show you. It's the reason why it looks so shitty. It's kind of weird just to design this mixing box here, but this is your economizer mixing box. So it's return air, power exhaust, goes into the dampers this way. It is only open like 20%. So it's mostly open to return. Goes in right here. And then you got the filters on the other side, right here, and your blower. So, hotter air, it's still dropping across the coil. It's just hotter air because of the outside air. It's so extreme here. I mean, it's probably pushing 110 right now. I haven't looked. Probably like 110 up here or something. And that D ring's up here. If I was moved down here, it'd probably read a lot lower. I'd like it to be in there, <laughs> but it's just not where they put it. So, it's not reading a hundred, like a totally mixed air temperature. Wish it was, the unit might stage a little better too. If they ever abruptly like change economizer position or whatever, it's gonna really affect the staging a little bit. It's just, I don't know, kind of wonder about the method to the madness. Yeah, 78 and 54 basically on the lower bank, so that's just with one compressor running. And the pressures, 542 over 119 and 120 basically, so. Such a side's okay, but high side's kind of high. Because it, it wouldn't hurt to wash this coil. I just think it should be able to hang in there right now. It's just ready for coil washing. It's, it shouldn't be because of the coil being dirty that it's tripping. But when I hit the second stage, man, it just it just hits it right away. You know, the best we just washed off this coil. Put the fans on, test mode, and then it kind of cool out. Evaporate the water. We start to see or lowered that D-ring supplier temperature connection, put it down more towards the center. Unit's running the fan, has not started the compressor stages yet, and already it's reading 79 degrees down lower. It's got 90 some degrees up high and you know closer to return air down low, so now it's reading a more accurate mixed temperature. Dropped down to 78.9, and it's not even running compressors. So let's see what happens when it starts, I guarantee you, even with one circuit, the supplier temperature is going to be lower. This should better control the uh, compressor loading and unloading. I don't know if those are supposed to be moved, but I'd rather see a you know probe type put in down low and on these lowers instead of uh, these D rings. But that's where I moved it. But it was up here. It was right here, or right here reading this hot, higher temperatures. So it was like 70 something coming out on top and 50 something coming out of the bottom. And it was regulating everything based on the upper deck, <laughs> you know, being heavily influenced by the 110 degree air. So it was reporting a higher spire temperature than you think it really is putting out mixed down below. And it was also causing the compressors to stay loaded longer when not needed with the lower airflow. So this looks like it's drying out pretty good. So I'm doing on here is you can see some of these have a whole bunch of wire. It's almost like they intended you to relocate this. I think down the supply duct would be best. But I'm just gonna relocate this just to get a more normal supplier temperature. Also on these, since they kind of running on pretty minimal in airflow, I moved the uh, return air sensor right here. It's just hanging up here. Put it down here. Maybe I'll take a picture on the next one. So these are just zip tied right here. It just seems like it's just dead air. Some are zip, zip tied real tight like this. So I'm gonna cut this one loose and move it over. All right, right in the airflow. Okay, right about here is where I believe my Samsung phone overheated. Cause it's getting to be about 110 degrees. Basically checking out this unit here. First was checking a bunch of airflow. Had to open the VAVs to kind of check it out with that more of its full capacity airflow. Check the RPMs static pressures all that stuff getting those high pressure trips 
Sometimes these units also get the low suction saturation trip, which is basically low suction pressure that it converts over to temperature, and that's a trip. And with these micro channel coils that are very sensitive, sometimes you'll go immediately chasing, you know, overcharge, dirty coil, if the condenser fan motors are running, and those can all check out, and then you'll just have random high pressure trips. And sometimes it, what it actually is is like low pressure or staging issues. The TXV clamps down, and you have a lot more refrigerant backed up into the outdoor coil. It's not feeding enough into the indoor coil, and that'll actually drive the pressure up because there's not that much volume in the micro channel to tolerate that, as there was with tube and fin type of coils, which you can often pump down an entire system into a tube and fin coil, but you cannot do that on a micro channel coil, not on purpose or because of some side effect of low airflow, be it a broken belt or something like that. Um, and actually a couple of years ago, you guys might remember, I was checking out a Lennox package unit, trying to figure out what they were doing and it had a micro channel outdoor coil. And what they did to prevent an actual high pressure trip was they added a second high pressure switch that closed on rise that was lower than the high pressure trip. And what it do is activate a 24 volt heater that they had taped to the sensing bulb for the TXV. So if you had low suction temperature and it started clamping down the TXV, as a result, extra refrigerant in the outdoor coil would cause the head pressure to rise. And then their fix was to heat up the sensing bulb to allow more refrigerant to flow through the indoor coil and alleviate that, which didn't make any sense because you're gonna have issues. So I thought that was kind of weird, but that's what they did. So basically you kind of run into some of those issues on other brands, train, carrier, whatever. The micro channel coil is very sensitive and it will make you chase the wrong problem sometimes, but it could just be low airflow, which a lot of it was with this unit in certain states. And then as I was working on it, made some adjustments there, kind of realized that it was also staging on the compressors more than they needed to be. And also not unloading when they should be and I realized that the supplier sensor chem factory attached way up high. And we have some extreme weather here, you know, 110, 115, 120 on the rooftops. The top half of the air coming in and mixing into the unit will be outside air mixed in with some return air and then cooled by the evaporator. And then that's where it was hitting that sensor. But that was like 10 degrees warmer than if I put it about a quarter of the way up rather than three quarters of the way up where the sensor was. So I just moved it down just a little below the halfway mark. I believe it'll get a lot better average supply air temperature. It should stage the compressors a little better and that will also help out. Another issue I did find, even after I washed that microchannel coil, and the coil was actually still wet on the bottom half, when compressor B started, it just immediately tripped within like 20 seconds of operation. So I don't know if somebody had added any refrigerant or it was just like a factory mistake, but I didn't have a recovery jug there. It wasn't what it was there for, but it does look like it needs to have some refrigerant removed. And then, so what I wanted to do is get the airflow all corrected and everything else corrected as best as possible. And then it is actually quite often, sometimes in Arizona desert, doesn't matter if it's Carrier, Train, Lennox, Aon, all those brands, I've had to trim the charge a little bit and you just want to do it after you've done everything else. So after some changes, you see uh, circuit A there would run more continuous when it shouldn't have been and the suction pressure was like 114 here in the image, but it would actually get down to like 100. Really pinching off the TXVs. Suction line's good and cold. So now with it unloading the compressors, that ought to be better. When it's all done, some refrigerant will have to be pulled from each circuit, most likely, on this unit and a couple other units. Anyway, that will do it. So I just wanted to do a little show and tell, I hadn't put up any videos in a while. So with that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. We'll catch you guys later. I'll get some more videos up when I get a chance.